Thank you very much indeed for keeping it CBA TV and trusting it to inform and tell you what's happening here in Somaliland, East Africa and beyond. Once again, welcome to CBA News Bulletin. My name is Felix Alois Rajoy. But first, let's look at the headlines making up our top stories. Somaliland government unveils the constitutional communication program. East African bloc condemns terrorist attack in Mogadishu. And Jubaland security forces arrest Al Shabaab foreign fighters. At least 115 people fear dead in worst Mediterranean shipwreck of the year. Let's start our broadcast with our own reporter Abdullah Hassan, where Somaliland government unveils the constitutional communication program to teach people the constitution. The outreach program to teach Somalilanders about the constitution was announced on Thursday at the Ministry of the Constitution. The unveiling ceremony was attended by the Ministries of Education, Information and the Minister of the Constitution. The project entails broadcasting educational programs on government television and radio. It is an interministerial program in which the Ministry of the Constitution will prepare the plan while the Ministry of Information will execute it. The Minister of Education, Osman Chama Adan, who attended the ceremony, announced that his ministry is planning to integrate the Constitution into the national curriculum. The Ministry of the Constitution has been working with the Ministry of Education, in particular the Curriculum Department, to integrate the Constitution learning into the national curriculum. We will execute the policy on our part. The Minister of the Constitution, Mohammed Haji Adan, said that learning the Constitution is indispensable for citizens so that they can know both their rights and obligations. We can say that the Constitution is what guarantees the rights of every person, and hence for its importance for every nation. It is important to teach the public about the Constitution to uphold it so that people can safeguard their rights and meet their obligations. So, the slogan we can choose for this program that will be aired on television and radio is Learn the Constitution. It is good for you. So, Maryland is often said to have a very progressive liberal constitution, but it is undermined by lack of public civic education and constant violations by the government. Still in Somaliland, the government has sent condolences to Tunisia over the death of its president Ayid Essebsi, who died at the Tunis military hospital on Thursday. Vice President Abdurrahman Saleh posted on his Twitter page the condolence message saying they will honor his legacy and mourn his loss. Tunisia's president, Qaeda Sebsi, has died at the Tunis military hospital, the office of the presidency announced on Thursday. The 92-year-old was hospitalized with a severe illness in late June, but returned to intensive care on Thursday, his son has said. Qaeda Sebsi was Tunisia's first freely elected president after it is 2011 broad democracy uprising. The Tunisian government has declared it seven days of mourning following the death of P.J. Qaeda Sebsi. Thank you, Palastro, for that report. Let's now change some gears to Somalia. The East African bloc on Thursday condemned the suicide attack that took place in the offices of Mogadishu's mayor on Wednesday, which left seven government officials dead, with the mayor among those injured. Our reporter, Angu Ngugi, gives us the details. The Intergovernmental Authority on Development expressed sympathy and condolences to the families of the victims and wished speedy recovery to those wounded. In a statement, the bloc said, IGAD condemns in the strongest terms the terrorist attacks perpetrated by the Al-Shabaab against the mayor's office in Mogadishu, which left a number of innocent civilians dead and others wounded, including the city's mayor. The eight-member regional bloc reiterated its support and solidarity with the people and the government as they continue to fight the scourge of terrorism and strive towards achieving lasting peace and stability. The statement comes after the Minister of Information, Mohamed Abdi Mareye, confirmed that three district commissioners, two directors and legal advisor were killed in the attack. Maria said a suicide bomber who targeted the weekly security meeting chaired by the mayor of Mogadishu, Abdirahman Omar Osman, detonated explosives which were strapped in the waist. 
The militant group, which has been fighting the Western-backed Somali government, claimed responsibility for the attack, saying their target was the United Nations envoy, who they believe wants inside the mayor's compound at the time of attack. Despite being driven out of Mogadishu, the militant group still stages guerrilla-style assaults and bomb attacks to drive out the AU mission's troops from Somalia and impose its version of Islamic law across the Horn of African nation. In Somalia, the state of Jubaland, according to reports, security officers captured three suspected Al-Shabaab members who are said to be foreigners. The three men are said to be of Tanzanian origin. This happened during a security operation at Afmado district in Lower Juba region. Somali security agencies detained the three Tanzanians who were captured during a security operation at Afmado district in Lower Juba region. Jubaland regional state officials said they are conducting further investigations on the suspects. Details about the identities of the three Tanzanians have not been released. Al-Shabaab group have also not commented on the matter yet. The Al-Shabaab is composed of Somali recruits and foreign terrorist fighters. At first glance, Kenya and Tanzania, the scene of some of Al-Qaeda's most impressive attacks, would appear to be fertile ground for recruiting militants into the global Islamist Jihad. Substantial Muslim populations, widespread poverty, poor policing, inadequate border control and systemic political and economic corruption would seem to make these East African countries potentially rich environments in which to attract new Al-Shabaab members. Al-Shabaab aims to pressure regional governments to withdraw troops from Somalia, where an African Union mission has been battling the militants since the year 2007. In line with that, police in Kenya have destroyed an improvised explosive devices, IEDs, assembly site believed to be that of Al-Shabaab at Gaame Ijara area in Garissa County. According to intelligence reports, the camp is said to have also served as a health service center for the Al-Shabaab. According to an intelligence brief that was seen by the nation media group in Kenya, weapons, explosives, electronics, large amounts of black explosive powder, foodstuffs and medicine were recovered from the scene. Among the medicine found at the camp on Wednesday was ceftriaxone, which is sold under the trade name Rosefin, which is an antibiotic used to treat bacterial infections. The Al-Shabaab militants plant explosives on roads and stage attacks, including kidnapping on targets in the border regions of Mandera, Wajir and Garissa, where it has killed police officers and soldiers with homemade bombs. On Tuesday, the militants are reported to have kidnapped two Kenyans in El Kambere and Hulugo in Garissa, but security agencies said they are in hot pursuit to rescue them. Recently, suspected Al-Shabaab militants abducted Cuban doctors Asel Herrera Correa and Landy Rodriguez, who were working in Mandera. The two are yet to be found, with the government only indicating that everything will be done to secure their freedom. Earlier this week, the group is said to have attempted to kidnap construction workers in El Wak, Mandera, but their plan was foiled by locals. Thank you, Angoy, for that detailed report. Now let's go a little bit international. Libyan Navy officials said on Thursday that about 115 people are missing and feared to have drawn, and another 134 were rescued by Libyan coast guards and local fishermen after a wooden boat carrying migrants capsized off Libya. Earlier, the UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR, said that up to 150 people were feared dead. There were about 250 people on board when the boat capsized off the coast near Comas, east of capital Tripoli, said Libyan Navy spokesman Ayub Kasim, adding that these were mainly from Eritrea and other sub-Saharan Africa and Arab countries. Libya is a hub for migrants and refugees, many of whom try to reach Europe in unseaworthy boats. The latest shipwreck takes the death toll of Mediterranean migrants to over 600 this year, putting 2019 on a track to be the sixth year in a row with more than 1,000 deaths, UNHCR spokesman Charlie Hearley said. 
Yahili said that survivors of the wreck were likely to be brought to two detention centers in Libya where they would face further risk, and he called for their immediate release. Libya says the migrants are illegally entering and leaving the country. It regularly detains them in centers that the UN says are effectively jails, exposing them to the added risk of being caught up in the country's civil war. One detention center in Tripoli was hit by an airstrike early this month, killing more than 50 people. UNHCR subsequently said it had been closed, but rescued migrants have continued to be sent there. Human rights activists have accused politicians in the European Union of timing a blind eye and letting people die rather than risk a voter backlash by appearing soft on immigration. Europe struggled to cope with an influx of more than 1 million refugees and migrants in 2015. Italy, many African migrants intended to first destination, has taken a tough line since a populist government took office in 2018 and immediately sought to close the nation's ports to rescued migrants. For CBN News, I'm Felix. Alois Rajoy. Three bombs rocked the Afghan capital of Kabul on Thursday killing at least 11 people and wounding 45 others. Marine Corps General Joe Dunford, chairman of the U.S. Joint Chief of Staff, met Afghan President Ashraf Ghani and NATO officials in the city. Ghani and U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo agreed in a phone call to set up efforts to reach a negotiable end to the nearly 18-year-old war in Afghanistan. State Department in a statement said Pompeo told Ghani on Wednesday call that Danford and U.S. envoy for Afghanistan Zamli Kalizada had been dispatched to Kabul to discuss in detail the next steps and a condition best withdraw of foreign forces. A suicide bomber blew himself near the minibus carrying employees of the Ministry of Mines and Petroleum, killing five women and a child. Video footage shared by security officials showed the bodies of the women and a child lying on the road in the eastern part of the city as bystanders try to help the wounded. Health officials said at least 20 people were taken to hospital by civilians with some of the wheelbarrows. A second bomb exploded on the road parallel to the site of the bus attack, killing five people and injuring some policemen trying to manage traffic after the first blast. ISIL claimed responsibility for the two attacks. A third blast, about three kilometers away, wounded at least 17 civilians. The Taliban claimed responsibility. The Taliban fighting to restore strict Islamic law after their 201 Oster at the hands of the U.S.-led troops said their fighters had used a vehicle-borne improvised explosive device to target nine foreign forces and destroy two vehicles. On Wednesday, a Croatian soldier serving in Afghanistan was killed and two others were seriously wounded in a suicide attack on their convoy outside Kabul. Afghan interior minister officials said the Taliban have killed or wounded over a thousand civilians since April, including more than 150 children. The attack came as Danford and Khalid met with Ghana. Washington is seeking to negotiate a deal that would see foreign forces pull out of Afghanistan in return for security guarantees by, by the Taliban, including a pledge that the country will not serve as a safe haven for terror groups. About 20,000 foreign troops, most of them American, are stationed in Afghanistan as part of the U.S.-led NATO mission to train, assist, and advise Afghan forces. Some U.S. forces also carry out counterterrorism operations. Yet, despite offering assurance during in peace negotiation, Taliban continue to target innocent civilians, said Colonel Soli Leggett, a spokesman for the U.S. forces in Afghanistan. Afghan security experts said the insurgents were increasing attacks to gain greater leverage in the peace talks. The eighth round of the talks is expected to begin this month in Qatar. The Taliban also clashed with Afghan forces in northern province of Takhar to secure control over checkpoints and capture several districts, both Sides claim to have inflicted heavy damage on their opponent. Elsewhere on Thursday, a roadside bomb hit a wedding party in the eastern province of Naghan. Six women and three children were killed in the blast in Kogani district. The province governor office said in a statement, no group has claimed responsibility for the attack. For CBN News, I'm Felix. Alois Joy. That marks the end of CBN News Bulletin. My name is Felix Alois Rajoy. And on behalf of all those who have made this broadcast possible, we say thank you very much. Until next time, Inshallah.